Hello and welcome to the LPES 2021 Kindergarten Orientation Program. Welcome parents, welcome new kindergarten students. My name is Melissa Bammer and I am the principal of the elementary school. Normally we have our orientation in May, but unfortunately this year with COVID we were unable to do so. So last year we put together a video, this year we put together a video. Um, I will be emailing you at the beginning of August um, with some different information, some letters, some videos to help you get yourselves ready for kindergarten and acclimated with our school. At the LPES, Lincoln Park Elementary School, our mission is to inspire and empower our children with opportunities that positively shape their lives and help them to become successful, lifelong learners who possess the critical thinking, academic, and leadership skills required for the 21st century. So let us begin our journey together. Normally at our orientation, we have a brief who's who of the, um, the important people in the district. Well, everyone's important in our district. Um, Mr. Meyer is our superintendent. I am Mrs. Bammer, the principal. Mrs. Ficker, who is the person that most of you have spoken with on the phone, she is my administrative assistant. Mrs. Sorrentino, she's the other secretary in the main office. You probably have spoken with her as well if you have called. Mrs. Safeli, our school nurse. Mrs. Canelli, our LDTC. Mrs. Heffler, our school counselor. PTO officers, and of course, our kindergarten teachers. And in the one video that is being sent to you, you will be able to put names and faces together. So Mrs. Safeli, in her piece, um, and in the piece that she put together in her video, she gave you some health office information. Um, if you do need to call or email your child out sick, as she discussed, there's her number on the screen, her email. When you call our school, you can either call her direct extension or when you call and you get the voice prompt, they'll ask you uh, to either press one if you wanna call your child out sick or two to speak with the school nurse. Um, notes are very important. Please make sure it includes all pertinent information and please, if it is a handwritten note, please make sure that you write legibly so we can read it. Um, also, those of you who have uh, other children who have gone through our school, um, you are familiar with the COVID daily screening form. New parents, this is through Genesis, and you all should have gotten your Genesis parent portal information. I will discuss that further in this presentation. But basically, every morning you go into your Genesis parent account, and you complete the screening form, and you submit it. Mrs. Heffler, our school counselor, in her piece talked about some of the things that she does in our school. She does a multitude of things in our school. She's, she's an excellent, excellent resource for students, for you parents, and for our teachers. And her contact information is listed on the screen. One of the things that we brought down a few years ago, the middle school um, started it, were houses, and we also do our houses here, and we are very excited to try and bring that back since we were unable to do as many activities because of the COVID pandemic. Mrs. Canelli spoke to you in the video that we put together about registration and screening. Normally in May at our um, orientation, we talk about the screening process and we have the children come in and we give them a short little test to assess their skills and then we rescreen them in September. Last year and this year, we did not do the May screening. Uh, this year we were kicking around being able to do a screening in June or July and unfortunately that just didn't happen with us not having complete clear guidance from the state and the CDC. Uh, so what we will be doing is we will be screening the children in September. They will be screened by their kindergarten teachers and once we have all that information it will help us target our approach for each individual child. 
The PTO is a very important organization for our district, and we have one PTO for both our elementary school and our middle school. They do a ton of activities for our kids. Obviously, the past year we have not had as many activities for our children um, because of all of the restrictions in place, but in a normal year, the PTO pays for um, assemblies, they pay for busing for field trips, uh, and some other various activities that they'll conduct during the year. So I do encourage you to join the PTO. Uh, they will be sending out information as we get closer to the start of the school year with how to join. So some general information that everyone likes to know. Our school hours on a regular day, our day starts at 9. That's when we expect the children to be in their homerooms ready to go, and we dismiss at 3.30 p.m. Delayed openings, we start at 11, and early dismissals, we end at 1.25. Three tardies equals one absence, and our general rule with absences is no more than two absences a month. Um, we obviously ask that vacations are not done during the school year because we do have a very packed day for all of our grades. Um, and appointments, we ask if those can be done outside of the school day. Parents, believe me, I know it's very hard. It seems that many doctors or dentists don't really work outside of the hours of nine to three. Um, so we do understand that things happen, but as a general rule, um, we want the children here. Obviously, with COVID and with children who are sick, if your child is experiencing any type of um, sickness symptoms, we do ask that you do keep them home. Our teachers, we have Mrs. Didi, Mrs. Giannacci, Mrs. Gomes, Mrs. Kerwin, and Mrs. Roller as our kindergarten teachers. More general information, you completed the registration online. We have the supply list that is posted on the electronic backpack page of our website and we usually post that uh, the end of June. We do ask that you do not purchase wheeled backpacks. Wheeled backpacks are very difficult um, in hallways. They should not be on school buses, so no wheeled backpacks. Also, please only send in the materials that are listed on the supply list. Any other materials that your child needs, we will supply or your teacher will reach out to you. For my kindergartners, I ask that a change of clothes and shoes um, is sent in. Accidents happen whether it's a bathroom accident or it's a I just opened my yogurt at snack time and it exploded all over my shirt accident or we went out for recess and I stepped in a puddle by accident. So having a change of clothes in the cubby uh, is very helpful because then it prevents Mrs. Cefeli from having to call you. You're at work, you can't get here, you're trying to call a neighbor, you're trying to call someone to get here. So this way, if you send in a change of clothes and a change of shoes, it just makes things a lot easier just in case because accidents happen. Um, rainy day bags is something that we have used in the past when we cannot go out for recess. And basically, it's an individual bag that your child has that has, you know, maybe a coloring book or two, some crayons, some colored pencils, um, no electronics, no toys. Please, 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 no toys. Toys are not allowed. They disappear. Stuffed animals are toys. So please, for the rainy day bags, only a coloring book, maybe a puzzle book, some blank paper with some crayons, some colored pencils, um, maybe a small game like Uno or something like that, but please no electronics and no toys. And again, yes, I know boys and girls, we love our stuffed animals. My son loves his stuffed animals as well. He has a ton, but we don't bring them to school. So the first few days of school, super exciting. You will get an August welcome letter and that will come at the end of the month and it will have an apple. The apple will have your child's name and it will have the teacher's name. And what it will have is um, it will be color coded and each teacher is a different color. So that helps you identify the other boys and girls who are in your class. 
one of the very important things that the teachers need to know is how is your child getting home? Is your child taking the school bus? If your child qualifies for busing, they will get a bus pass. The bus pass will be on a lanyard. That's what we used last year, and it was super, super helpful. Um, the bus pass will be worn. Now we know that there are some children who sometimes they're picked up, sometimes they um, are going to an aftercare program, so it's very important. And the kindergarten teachers will talk to you at back to school night parents about this, making sure that they know how your child is getting home. Morning drop-off um, begins at 8.35 in the morning. What does that mean? If you put your child on the bus, whatever the time that the bus comes, um, that's the time. If you drive your child to school, that's when drop-off starts at 8.35. So we do have some children who do not qualify for busing based on where they live. So for those that don't qualify for busing and the parents drive, you will drop them off starting at 8.35 in the morning. That's when the doors will open and you'll drop all the way up to 9 o'clock. And uh, further on in this PowerPoint, I have some pictures of the drop-off. Afternoon dismissal, as I said, our school day goes till 3.30. We usually start dismissing around 3.25. And uh, if you drive your child to school and if you pick your child up from school, they enter and exit from the same back walker door. And walking to class on that first day, sorry parents, you guys don't come into the school building. We do have children and staff members who are around to help escort our children down to their classrooms. We do have a snack time. Based on the schedule, some children have snack in the morning, some have it in the afternoon. So we do ask that every day you send in a snack, please a healthy snack with a drink and please label the snack as snack because we have a lot of children who, if in their lunch box they have a snack and they have their lunch, sometimes they're eating their lunch at snack time and then now it's lunchtime and they're super hungry and that snack just isn't going to cut it. As far as lunch, the children can purchase lunch or bring lunch. Lunches based on what we have been told at this point, um, and again, over the summer things can change, I'm not sure, but as of this time, uh, lunches are going to be a cold grab and go option. There will not be hot lunch choices. The menus will be available on our website. And again, as we get closer to August and we get closer to September, then we will know more about exactly what lunch will look like. And again, if your child is bringing a lunch in his or her lunchbox, please make sure that that's labeled as lunch. The children have lunch cards. We get those after they have their school pictures taken. And it has a little ID card on the back for when they go through and they scan it for the lunch program. I believe at this point we have been told that um, the cost for lunches, uh, parents will not have to pay for lunches again. Again, that we are not sure of and hopefully we'll have more guidance from the state on that as we get into August and September. But you can log in to payforit.net and you can create an account for your child and you can put money on the account so you don't have to send any money in with your child. Um, the children can pay for lunches and snacks with cash or through the Pay For It account. We do not accept credit cards in the school. Um, pay For It really is the best way to go. That way you don't even have to worry about sending any money in with your child. And if you have questions, the cafeteria phone number is listed on the screen. So this is a picture of what our cafeteria generally looks like. This was pre-COVID. Um, the tables are similar. However, we are going to have less children at the tables and the children are going to be behind individual screens. So we are going to have a rotating schedule where some children will be eating in the cafeteria, some will be eating in their classrooms, and then we will cycle that out. So for example, Mrs. Jones class, maybe Monday they will be eating in their classroom, but the rest of the week they'll be eating in the cafeteria and we'll change that around so the children will have the cafeteria experience.
We normally have them go through this door. That's where they would go and they would get their lunches. Again, this was pre-COVID. We are still waiting on some guidance for exactly what it will look like. But if your child needs to get a lunch, I guarantee you he or she will get a lunch. This is the inside of the cafeteria that the children go through in a normal year to pick up their lunch choices. And then they come out and they have the point of service machine where they scan through and pay or scan their card. Um, there is milk available. We had, again, pre-COVID, we had salads, sandwiches, we had hot lunch choices, we had cold lunch choices, but the guidance that we're getting at this time is that it will be a grab and go cold lunch option. We do have children in the school with food allergies. It's very, very important that Mrs. Cefalia, the school nurse, knows if your child has any allergies. Your child's homeroom teacher will let you know if there are children with allergies that are in the classroom. And that is for you that, let's say if there's a child with a peanut allergy, my child has a nut allergy, um, that you would know that and then you would refrain from sending in any nut-based products. We do not have treats that are sent in for the entire class for any reason. So for example, um, birthday treats, we love birthdays at LPES, but no treats are to be sent in for birthdays for the class. Nothing for the class for any reason. Um, if we do have class parties, there are some class parties that will be scheduled. The class parents will organize that, but we, as a general rule, nothing comes into the classroom unless you're sending it in for your individual child. So I had mentioned the parent portal in Genesis. The parent portal gives you 24 seven access, attendance, grades, grade book, report cards, et cetera. You can access it both from the district page or the LPES homepage. Once your account is activated, you will receive an email with the instructions for how to set up your account. If you have any questions, please email us or call us. Um, if you change your email, please let us know because we set it up with the original email that you have given us and we know as time goes on sometimes emails change so please 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 make sure that we know if your email changes so that we can update that um, there are times that the parent portal is not available that is usually during the summer when we are scheduling the children and four times during the school year when we are doing report card grade collection on Fridays, I send an electronic backpack through Genesis. Um, it kind of gives you a summary of some things coming up. It'll give you some dates. It'll have some important information. It has a link to our website. It has a link to the electronic backpack page where we have community flyers, library flyers, sports flyers, etc. Please check your spam folder. Um, it's, as I said, it's sent through Genesis. It could come as a Genesis SIS email or a do not reply email. So sometimes those do get kicked to spam. So if you're not getting it, check there first and then please reach out to me and let me know. The student parent handbook is available in planners. Um, our kindergartners do not get a planner, but the student parent handbook is available on our website and we will update the new one in August. Sometimes parents ask to send in invitations for outside events. For example, if you're having a birthday party for your child, we will only give out invitations to either the entire class, so for example, all the children in Mrs. Jones class, or all the boys in Mrs. Jones class, or all the girls in Mrs. Jones class. We will not give out anything addressed otherwise. So for example, if there are 10 boys in the class and you only wanted, um, you didn't want to invite all of the boys, we will not hand out specific invitations. We will also not hand out invitations to children in other classes your child's teacher will give you more information on that as well. As far as our dress code, and again, this is in the handbook, we ask that um, if your child wears some type of tank top, the straps are at least two fingers in width, no quote unquote spaghetti strap tank tops. Um, skirts or shorts that are longer than the longest finger when the arms are against the body, no halter tops or tops that don't have straps. And we don't, um, 
ban quote unquote flip flops or wedge sandals or heels for our young ladies, but we really do discourage them because they're very difficult to walk in. The children do have PE class where they need to have sneakers and uh, with running and running in flip flops, sometimes it doesn't end well. So our web page, you can find a ton of information on our website. We will be updating the website, so it may look a little different than this when you go on, but lincolnparkboe.org, and you will go to the elementary page. And as the school year starts, you'll be able to go to the calendar. You'll see some upcoming events. Um, and again, this is where you can find the electronic backpack page. You can find the handbook, and you can find other pertinent information. So here's a sample schedule. A lot of parents ask, what does kindergarten look like? So here is a sample schedule that we are uh, looking to institute for September. So we have a homeroom period. Our homeroom period is a half hour and it's an SEL homeroom, social emotional learning. We have our reading and language arts denoted as ELA, English language arts. So the children will have a period of, let's say reading to start the day. Then we have grade level intervention blocks, which is where the children will move about with the other kindergarten teachers, and they will work on skills at their targeted levels. We have special classes, art, computers, PE, music, and Spanish. The children will be going to the art room. The children will be going to the gymnasium. However, they will have computers, music, and Spanish in their classroom. We have a snack time set in for our kindergartners, and on most days there's also some center time and iReady time. iReady is a computer-based, or in this case for my kindergartners, it's on the iPad, and it's for reading and math, and it's differentiated instruction for the children to work on uh, areas that they need. And then there is a library period wherein the children will be able to go to the library to take out a book. They have a math period, they have recess and lunch, they have a language period, a science and social studies period, and then we use handwriting without tears and phonics first as well. And all of our periods are 40 minute periods, besides homeroom, which I mentioned was 30 minutes. Busing is um, uh, always a big question with uh, my kindergarten parents. So we use First Student as our bus company. We don't have our own buses. We contract with First Student, and we do have eight buses. The bus passes come from the transportation department. We do not send them. So if you have any questions about your child's bus stop or bus passes, we ask that you call the Board of Education. Their number is 973 six nine six five five zero zero there is no changing buses so for example if your child is on bus one but you want them to go home for a play date with a friend on bus four we do not allow that the bus is the bus is a bus if your child is not going to take the bus home we ask that you send in a note that you'll be picking your child up to the teacher it's also very helpful to let us in the main office know as well we ask that if something does have to change or you have a question, please do not call between 3 p.m. and the end of the day. That's when we're getting ready for dismissal and it is a hectic time. And again, I know that things change parents and with daycare and certain days, but please do not change plans every day. It's very confusing to the child, it's confusing to the teacher, and it's confusing to the office. We have about 500 children that we're responsible for dismissing each day. And it again, it gets very confusing if the children do not know how they're getting home. The first student phone number is listed on the screen. That's if you leave something on the bus, you can call first student directly. When the children come off the bus, buses pull up in the front of the school. Um, those of you who drive your children, you drive them to the back of the school. Anyone who comes on a bus, they come in the front doors. And once the children come in, they sit outside of their classrooms, socially distanced, of course. Um, and then in dismissal, we dismiss by buses. So we'll say uh, students on buses three and four, please come to the uh, please come to the lobby. And then the children will line up and then sit in their bus lines. We have pre-COVID, 
when the children come and sit on the bus, we generally have kindergartners sitting in the front with fourth graders sitting towards the back. Because of COVID, we were having siblings sit together. Again, we are waiting on some more guidance as the summer goes on uh, with how exactly we will be arranging the children on the bus. But when we put the children on the bus in the afternoon, we have a staff member who goes on the bus to ensure that everyone is seated, everyone is in a seat, and everyone has his or her seatbelt on. As per current guidelines, no child can get off at their bus stop if someone is not there to get them. And when I say someone to get them, it means an adult, a person over the age of 18, or a middle school or older sibling has to be present. So for example, if your child is in kindergarten and you are not there, or a neighbor isn't there, or someone who is responsible for your child, the child will not be allowed off the bus and they will be brought back to the school. Bus behavior, we will go over with the children, but we do ask that you help us. We do not have staff members who are on the bus. Once the bus leaves, it's the students and the bus driver. So you as the parents helping us enforce the rules is extremely helpful. So again, we want the children to obviously show respect for the driver and follow his or her directions. They enter and leave the bus one at a time, no pushing or crowding. They have to stay in their assigned seat until the bus completely stops. Courteous language, we don't need to yell. Keeping the bus clean, there is no food or drink allowed on the bus. There is no water, no food, no snack, no nothing. No eating or drinking on the bus. The children need to remain seated for the entire ride. Obviously, everything stays within the bus, nothing out of the windows. They need to wear their seatbelt at all times, just like they do in their cars with you. And we ask them to behave in an orderly manner while waiting at the bus stop each morning. So please, please, please help us enforce these rules. So when you send in a note, here are examples of notes that aren't really acceptable. <laughs> Please do not send in little bits of paper um, and these do not have enough information on them. What we do have on the electronic backpack page of our website is we have a sample walker form that you can use. It's a full sheet of paper. It has the teacher's name. It has your signature. It has the date. Very important. Oftentimes we'll get a note, my child is going to be picked up today and there's no date. Okay, well, is that for today? Is it for May 20th? Is it tomorrow? Did the child forget it? So please, please, please make sure that we have all the pertinent information. Morning drop off. So as I had mentioned, all cars, if you're dropping your child off, go to the back parking lot where a single drop off line forms. Follow the arrows. It's one lane please pull up to the drop-off area, which is the stop sign, and your children will get out of the car. Adults stay in the car, moms and dads. Sometimes you don't always drop off. Maybe grandma or grandpa or Aunt Susie or whomever drops off. Please share this information with them because we've had times where we were yelling, you know, pull up, pull up, pull up to the stop sign or you know, grandma gets out and we say, no, I'm sorry, you know, ma'am, you have to remain in the car. I'm the grandmother. No one told me. So please, please, please share these rules and procedures with anyone who's dropping your children off. So it is a drop and go, this drop off line. We're not getting out of the car to put on the backpack and give kisses and walk them to the door. Um, it's, it's one lane. It's drop and go. Now, ideally, if the first car pulls up to the stop sign, we can have five, six cars of children getting out at the same time, which is great. It really expedites the drop-off line. But once you're, if you're that fifth car, please stay in the line and then just go up to the stop sign and pass. Do not go around to create another exit line because we do have many people who park their cars and walk their children across. So just stay in that one line. Don't drop off and then zip around all the other cars. Um, so please, again, please share this with anyone who drops your child off. So here, for example, is a picture uh, pre-COVID that shows how you come around and then 
pulling up as close to the stop sign as possible. So if you do need to come to school to drop something off, we're asking that you park in any available parking spot in the back and walk to the front of the school, ring the bell. People are late, we understand. If your child is late to school after 9 a.m., please do not just pull up and let your child get out of the car and come to the main door on their own. Please walk your child to the door, please. Um, if the back door is closed because the door closes at 9 a.m., please don't drop your child off there because the teacher who is on duty has already left if that door is closed. Please, if you see that door closed, bring your child around to the front. When you ring the buzzer, please state your name, your child's name, and your reason for ringing. We have security bins that we started a few years ago and they have been super successful. We have a drop-off bin and we have a pickup bin. If you request work because your child is sick, um, after you give the, the teacher time to put it together, that will be available in the pickup bin. And if you need to drop something off for your child, we have post-it notes and pens. You leave it in the drop-off bin and then we will come out and we will get it. Please make sure that it is labeled and please make sure that it is a school item. So for example, if your child forgets his or her water bottle or his or her science homework, yes, those could be dropped off. But if it's a pretty headband that they forgot to put on, please don't drop that off. If you do need to come into the school for a reason, we use the lobby guard. And one of the attachments that you will be getting in the beginning of August will be our lobby guard informational video that we taped a few years ago to show you how to use the lobby guard. So afternoon pickup, afternoon pickup is um, a busy time. So we ask that you follow the directions. And again, parents, please, 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 if you have someone else that's not you picking up your child, please make sure that you share these directions with the person picking the child up. So the roadway leading to the back lot, if you drop your child off in the morning, it's the same entrance. It's a, it's for two-way traffic. You cannot park along the curbs. You can't park along the curb. Oh, my child's right there. I'm just gonna like leave my car and park, run over and get my child and then hop back in. No, please, please don't do that. Follow the directional arrows. Traffic goes one way. Don't go against the arrows and please don't park in those areas that are yellow as shown in the picture on the bottom. As you come around, traffic goes one way towards the school and the storage sheds please park in an available parking space. Please don't park in front of parking spaces. Don't block people in. Please, please, please. Again, when you're facing the school, you're gonna park in any available parking space. And then once uh, the spots are filled, the crossing guard in the back will start a pickup line. Again, it would be one line if you leave your vehicle, please remain within sight of it. So this picture shows one of the crosswalks. Please only cross in the crosswalk areas. When people start crossing all over the place, it does cause a backup. Um, and again, traffic only goes one way. Please, please, please be mindful of pedestrians. Obviously, we always want you to hold your child's hand, but we know sometimes someone may run out, so really please be careful. So our walkers are dismissed out of the back walker door. That's the same entrance for those who are dropped off in the morning. We dismiss in grade order. Uh, what we did start last year is we were dismissing with siblings uh, to try and expedite the process. Parents, please don't crowd the door. Um, it's a visual pickup, so you need to be within sight of those dismissing your children. Basically what will happen is the door will open uh, and then we will have teachers, uh, aides who will be on duty who will be dismissing your child. So we ask that you are present on the blacktop. You cannot be waiting in your car. You cannot be across the parking lot. You need, there needs to be that visual. So don't wait in your car. Don't park along the driveway. Please also don't pick up a friend's child. Um, you know, if your friend is quote unquote running late, please make sure that you're only picking up who you need to pick up. So final thoughts. 
Um, we do have security drills and fire drills that we conduct. We have one security drill a month and one fire drill a month. We do not interrupt classes for visits. Um, we have the bins out front. If you drop something off, make sure you label it and we will get that to your child. But it, you do not drop the water bottle off and then say, oh, I'd like to give the water bottle to my child. We do not allow that. You drop the water bottle off and I assure you, we will get that to your child. The lobby guard, as I mentioned, we will also be sending that video when we send this out in August. Um, and when you ring the bell, with the front door. We will ask you questions. Um, even if we think we recognize you, please don't get offended if we're asking you for information. Sometimes if, depending on where the person stands, if you stand kind of close to the doors or in between the two doors, we really can't get a clear picture of your face. So we'll ask your full name, your child's full name, and why you're coming in. So if you ring the bell and you just say, hi, I'm here to pick up my son, we're going to ask you more information because we have a lot of sons here. <laughs> so um, you'll state your name, you'll state your child's name. It's helpful uh, if you know the teacher and then we will um, allow access. Our HIV policy is available on our website. All of our policies are available on the website. If you ever have any questions, obviously you can always call us um, and let us know. Uh, but again, if you have uh, w what your questions are, but all of the policies are available on the website. When the parent portal opens at the end of August, you will be required to complete some forms. Once you complete those forms, then your parent access will be fully granted. Genesis will open before our open house. Our open house is scheduled for Thursday, August 26th. Um, now, this is being recorded um, and the school year isn't over yet. This is the end of May, uh, but right now that is the date that we have for our open house. And with social distancing in mind, we have divided it with our blocks. So if your last name is between A and H, you will come between 930 and 1030. If your last name is between I and Q, 1030 to 1130 and R to Z, 1130 to 1230. Now, classrooms may not be fully set up. The teachers are not present, but this is a chance for you to come into the school, see the location of the classroom. Uh, we had some uh, students who were not here at all last year because of being virtual students. So this way they can come in and they can see where the classrooms are. The door will be open. You'll just come on in and you'll take a look around. While it is scheduled for an hour, most people stay about 10 minutes, um, but that is your time slot. Again, if you have any questions, please call us. If you ever have a problem, please follow the chain of command. I am always available to talk to any parent at any time. You can email me, you can call me. Um, the main office, Mrs. Ficker and Mrs. Sorrentino can answer your questions. Um, if there's an issue in the classroom, I ask that you speak to the teacher first because that will oftentimes help clear up any issues. Uh, a note about social media. I know our lives are ruled by social media. However, we have, as a school district, our own uh, Facebook page and our own Instagram page, and we have our websites. If your child's teacher sends something to you, if I send something to you, um, or if someone else in the school sends something out through email or whatever, please don't post it on social media. We have our own accounts and we will post things that we feel we need to on social media. Oftentimes people feel that they're being helpful by, um, you know, I heard this and I'm going to send it out. Please don't do that. We will send it out on our social media platforms. Again, our website is listed and if you have any questions, we are always available for uh, anything that you may need. Just pick up the phone, give us a call, or send us an email. 
So I know this isn't the normal way that we've done orientation. Uh, however, hopefully you found this video informative. Um, hopefully the other videos that we'll be sending will be informative while you're, you're able to kind of put people's uh, names with their faces, uh, the lobby guard video that we'll be sending, and some other information that we'll be sending. So thank you, parents and new students. We look forward to seeing your faces in September.